Hi, my name is William Walker. I'm the director with Cincinnati Bartending School here in the north side of Cincinnati, Ohio. You know, the, the bar scene is, is very uh, interesting. Uh, there's a lot of different types of bars out there, and I've gone from, you know, corporate dining to casual fine dining, uh, hotels, neighborhood bars, sports bars. Um, I've been in just about every environment working in a bar, and each time the experience was different. But, but the great part about it is that if you're a bartender in this business, you interact with everyone. Uh, my name's Eddie. I enjoy making a good cocktail for people to enjoy, you know. You know, especially being at a dive bar. In a dive bar like this, um, we get all types of walks of life. You know, pilots, just people off the street, uh, doctors, uh, running a mill, just people doing their nine to five, you know. I try to bring the party to anybody that's coming in here, you know. We we'll aim to have a good time, you know. And uh, as long as I'm having a good time, everybody else is having a good time, you know. There's many ways to get into, you know, to the bar industry, but, you know, I would suggest, you know, you have to start, you know, pretty much at the bottom, work your way up, you know. And that's where I started here. I started in the kitchen, bar backing as well, and then here I am out front. Bartenders are a tribe. It's a very close fit, and I'm not the typical gypsy. I get in a good place. You stay in the place because you make money, you make friends. It's performance theater. Every night's different. It's like being on stage. The top bartenders are part mixologist, part sage, part rock star. moments that kind of surprised me in terms of bartending, um, it's amazing how many drinks you can memorize. I really felt like I was going to struggle with that, but honestly, it's, a, it's kind of like with songs, you know, you learn your chords, you can kind of do anything. The routine on a busy night, uh, so the thing about that is that there really isn't a routine because every night goes differently, uh, but I've been in here when it's four deep on all four sides of this bar, and I mean, if we're talking three, four hundred customers in here. It's one of these industries where you kind of have to put yourself out there. You kind of have to just be willing to throw caution to the wind and just sort of be that person. You know what I mean? I personally am a very, don't look at me, kind of a guy, but yet when I'm back here, I'm running the place. You know what I mean? It's just, you, you just got to do it. It's a really long-term goal for me. Uh, I would like to open a bar. Um, so I'm kind of a punk rocker, uh, so I, I like dive bars, that kind of thing. When I went to the bartending school, it was a two-week program. That school has done more for me in this job than I think any schooling I took, like high school, any of that, like, yeah, no. My name is Heather Barlow. It's kind of cool that I have Bar in my last name. <laughs> so I had just gotten back from my second deployment and I was looking for a new job and I had never worked in the restaurant industry at all before. So I was shocked. Like I wish that I would have gone to an actual bartending school. Back then I was very like shy and reserved. So getting into that kind of industry was like a shock to me. But like soon after that, I let my goofy side out a little bit. Because being a bartender, you can basically be whatever you want. Like you'll have regulars that come in and they're like, let's do a shot. And they're like, okay. And then I'm like, what do you want? And they're like, make something. So I stare at the whole liquor collection for like a solid minute. And then I'm like, hmm, okay, let's put these together. <laughs> and sometimes it ends up being really nasty and other times it works out pretty well. It's one of my favorite things about bartending for sure.
name is Lacey Cummins. What I like most about bartending is the fast-paced environment, the good people I get to work with. Um, especially working at a hotel bar, you get a lot of out-of-towners, out you know. A lot of people take for granted the pressure that a bartender is under. You know, they don't realize that you're one person and you got 20, 40 people that you're waiting on at one time, so. My ultimate goal being a bartender is to make other people happy. My name is Matthew Sweeney. I taught myself um, a lot of bartending in my opinion. Um, it's a lot of trial and error and uh, bullshitting. I do think there's a very big artistic part when it comes to bartending and making drinks. There's a lot of creativity involved. Um, just like in music and art, a lot of times there's no original ideas, but there are definitely tons of ways that you can make something your own. Sometimes you just get a wild hair up your butt and then uh, decide, hey, I want to make a cocktail with this, and then boom, it turns out to be incredible. And especially in bartending, it's surprising how many things end up working together. A lot of really good drinks tend to do almost more with like process. Bartenders, to, in my experience, are a very finicky breed when it comes to the way they do things, whether it's the way they cut their fruit, whether it's the, how long they muddle something, what kind of product they use. Uh, there's a saying in the food industry, and it's called mise en place. And basically what that means is get all your shit ready ahead of time and that really saves you a lot of time when it comes down to a, a busy night. Um, and then Red Bull. Drink a ton of Red Bull. But. <laughs> So I'm Joe Bandenberg. Uh, I'm pretty heavily involved in like bourbon and beer. It just comes down to um, different preferences really as far as like your choice and what you like when we're talking about bourbon and beer really. You can derive a lot of that from like the mash bill. So somebody that's like just starting off with bourbon might want to do something with a bit more of like a weeded mash bill. It's funny because the bourbon community will know which specific picks are better, and you'll see that fluctuate with the prices. It's um, it's similar to like a stock market. My name is McKenna Cowell. I really became interested in bartending uh, when I started working at Third and Main. Um, so the opportunity to learn more and learn how to make drinks for people really, really appealed to me. I attended Will's school back in September, early fall time frame. Like I had so much fun and I learned so much in a two-week crash course, it was insane. Oh my goodness, to be a good bartender, you really have to be able to think on your feet. Um, you have to thrive in chaos <laughs> because I have seen bars on Friday and Saturday nights and they are popping. Okay, my name is Brandon Sargent, so I am a barback. When you are barbacking, you do get to bartend from time to time. Um, it allows you to like perfect your craft to a bit. Um, I have great bartenders myself. Those bartenders, um, we go through drinks, we make drinks together, we taste drinks together, we serve drinks together. I had the pleasure of going to Cincinnati School of Bartending. So the program was amazing. I mean, um, I mean, everything's at the tip of your hands. All you got to do is learn. I mean, they they provided everything you need. I will tell you that the course is very detailed. We don't just teach you how to make just the drinks, we teach you how to engage. We teach you how to be a professional, how to greet your customer, how to sell the product that's behind your bar. We teach you how to work with your coworkers as a team, and we teach you what it is to be a responsible server of alcohol. Our job is to get you familiar, to get you comfortable, and to get you confident to be able to go out to the industry and do it professionally and have fun doing it. And uh, you'll make a lot of money in that sense. We have a festival in town. Um, first year we opened this place up, everybody said, oh my God, like, you know, there's gonna be so many people, it's gonna be crazy. I got nothing. Until about 10 o'clock at night, all the carnival workers came over. This guy brought the biggest margarita glass I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, I made him about a 120 ounce margarita that was about this freaking big. Um, yeah, it was great. <laughs> 